Yeah, so I agree that the UK stock market looks reasonable value on beaten up earnings. So in a scenario where we get a vaccine and we avoid a no-deal Brexit, then I think the UK stock market looks pretty attractive. Um, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with both of those two things. So in, in the near term, my view would be to avoid big bets either way in the UK. Uh, particularly, if you look at the industry as a whole, the average fund in the UK has about a 50% allocation to mid and small cap stocks, whereas the benchmark puts the all show is about 20% in mid and small cap stocks. So the average fund is taking a 30% overweight bet that this is all going to play out well, that we will get a deal and that the mid and small caps will outperform. Whereas if we get a no deal Brexit, then I think sterling would fall quite sharply and your international revenues in the FTSE 100 would outperform uh, those more domestically focused mid and small cap stocks. So I don't think a 30% overweight in mid and small cap stocks, which a lot of funds are taking, makes a lot of sense. I would be more neutral on size at the moment and more neutral on UK equities as a whole. But if we get good news on a vaccine and we do avoid a no deal Brexit, then I would look to increase exposure to UK equities as an attractive recovery play. And let's just tick the box on emerging markets. How do you feel about ownership of EM and where would you go? I think what's notable is how China has been able to handle this virus so much better than most of the rest of the world. If you look at uh, subway usage, for example, in the key cities in China, it's down about 9% compared with this time last year. Contrast that with London, where tube usage is down about 60% year on year. Um, and that's because they've managed to get the virus under control. So I think that China is an attractive way of playing a recovery um, that isn't as dependent on a vaccine as it is elsewhere in the world. Um, and of course, you've got that long term structural growth story in China to help back that up. And you're paying a PE of around 15 times earnings. So you've got growth at a reasonable price, whereas in the US, you've got some growth in those growth stocks, but you're paying much higher valuations for that growth. So I think China does look attractive, uh, certainly as a medium to long term play.